Well, the Ware Wolf Lake Fire Protection District is holding its annual pancake breakfast fundraiser tomorrow. It's to support the station shop with a fireman program. Brooke Slyer is live with more. Brooke? Yeah, good morning, Abby. Well, this year they want to sponsor 23 children and to raise funds, they're holding a pancake breakfast tomorrow. So you better bring your appetite. The breakfast will run from 7 in the morning to 11 in the morning. Of course, they'll be serving pancakes, bacon, sausage, and hot, fresh coffee to get your day going. Now, if the weather is nice enough, an AirVac crew might fly in for a bite to eat. That'll be a sight to see. There's no set price for a plate of food. Instead, it's all donation-based and what your heart tells you to give. All proceeds will go to the department's Shop with a Fireman program. Now, this program started seven years ago as a way to give kids in the area a special Christmas who otherwise might not get one. Last year, as a COVID precaution, schools provided a Christmas list, and firefighters did the shopping, wrapped the presents, and delivered them along with food baskets. This holiday season, firefighters will follow the same protocol to keep everyone healthy. Now, again, this pancake breakfast is taking place tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. And we'll go ahead and fund the Shop with a Fireman program. For those who want more information, it is on the station's Facebook page right here behind me. It will also be on our website a little later today. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to you, Nick, because I know that you are tracking the chance for severe weather. Yeah, we've been talking about it for a few days, the uh, significant threat for severe storms coming up later on tonight. You can almost feel it when you step out this morning. The warm, humid air is starting to creep back in, and when it feels like that, uh, you know severe storms probably not too far away. Of course, December, not a month that we think about severe weather, but if we end up dealing with severe weather tonight, it would be the second time in less than a week. Uh, of course, the Storm Prediction Center upgrading the entire region. I'll go back to that graphic real fast. Entire our region now in a level three. The a threat there for damaging straight line winds, but also a few tornadoes. And we may actually see that upgraded in some parts of the area to a level four later on this morning. Through the day today, a few light showers, some hit and miss drizzle, very warm and very windy as well. Winds picking up from the south. We turn our attention to tonight after sunset. We're thinking as early as about 7 p.m. We could be tracking some of these stronger storms. And this is a long duration, meaning that it goes into the early morning hours on Saturday. The threat may continue for parts of our region to as late as about three or four o'clock in the morning. Now, as we make our way towards daybreak on Saturday, cold front moving through and the storm threat will get out of here. Some much cooler air then begins to filter in for the weekend. Uh, this morning, some fog out there, especially in some of the rural, more, more low lying areas and very, very warm for this time of year. 54 degrees. That is above our average high temperatures for this time of year. Dew points have been on the climb, so even if you haven't seen rain right now, it is warm, it's humid, the ground's still pretty cold. There's a lot of wet roads out there, a lot of condensation forming on some of those roads. Clouds, of course, overhead, a lot of low clouds. We've been tracking just a few showers. Looks like maybe a few of those crossing out of Union into Johnson County, so get ready over into Vienna. Some light rain showers moving your way, and then just north of Cape Girardeau, and then back into northern Bollinger County. Warm front to our north and to the south of that, a lot of warm, humid air to the north of it. A lot of cold air. In fact, uh, some snow flying out across parts of the northern plains. But this is the storm system that is going to make its way eastward and trigger some of those showers and storms later on tonight. Uh, to our north, Peoria at 32 degrees. There's that colder air that's moving away from us. Warm, humid air pumping up from the south to our south right now. Memphis, Tennessee before 7 a.m. 60 eight degrees right now. So there is some very warm, very humid air to our south. Notice through the afternoon hours, just a few hit and miss showers, upper 60s for highs today across southern Illinois, lower 70s this afternoon into western Kentucky and southeast Missouri. I'm going to clear away the temperatures here so you can really see the radar. This is 7 p.m. Storms starting to develop in some of our western counties and then as they continue to develop and move to the north and east, it's about 9 p.m. overspreading much of the region. Not everybody's going to see severe weather, but some of the strongest storms here by this point could be producing strong straight line winds, possibly a few tornadoes, and then that threat continues. This is 11 p.m. We're still having storms around. Even at 1 a.m., still some stronger storms moving through. 
By about 5 a.m., here's the cold front. The storms move east, the cooler air begins to move in, the severe weather threat gets out of here, will cool back into the upper 30s, and then tomorrow afternoon, a cool and blustery day. But uh, we don't bring these bars this high very often. The main threat, once again, strong straight line winds, but there is a significant tornado threat coming up later on tonight. The uh, Storm Prediction Center here in the 10%, that is a yellow color, the entire region in that. Again, we could see the possibility of a few strong tornadoes as well later on this evening. So make sure you've got the Storm Track 3 app. Make sure you've got the push notifications turned on so that if there is a warning, if there is an alert, that you get it sent to your smartphone and that you are getting it. Have your phone charged this evening. Multiple ways to receive warnings. And it's not a time to panic, but it's a time to plan. Have a plan. Know where you would go in case there is a tornado warning issued for your location. Make sure that uh, you know where you would go in your home. Maybe it takes you a little while to get someplace. Have a plan in place. All right, cooler into the weekend as the storms clear out, but uh, we'll bounce right back in the low to mid 60s towards the middle of next week with some more rain chances towards the end of next week. Of course, Evie, it is a Friday, which yes. means we are going to give away an umbrella. Heath, yes. you're our winner this week, and that's a great picture. Hey. Love the uh, two deer up there on the hillside. That's and nice. The sunrise yeah. or sunset. Great picture. Appreciate that one, Heath. Very nice. And going back to the storm threat there tonight, Evie, we, again, we don't want people to panic. Don't be sure. scared of this, but you need to plan ahead of time. Not everybody's going to see severe weather, but those that do, it could be fairly significant. And especially if we get into the nighttime hours, mm -hmm. it's always a bigger mm -hmm. concern. You can't see it coming, and a lot of people go to bed. So make sure you have right. a way that's going to wake you up. All right. Thank you, Nick. Well, it's now time to see who's hiring this week's job squad. So let's start with Amron. The company is hiring utility locals locators immediately to work in the Southern Illinois East St. Louis area. Pay is between $19 and $25 an hour to start. Now this could be a good career move if you're looking for something more long term. More information on local locations you can visit statestakecenter.com slash careers. We also want to remind you of the job fair that's happening next Wednesday hosted by Mandracon. It'll be at the Pavilion in Marion from 9 until 12. Dozens of local employers will be available. And lastly, WLC Management Firm is currently looking for a director of nursing in Franklin and Saline counties. The firm is offering a $10,000 sign on bonus for this position. An RN license is required and the company is offering a benefits package. If you're interested, you can send a resume to info at WLCfirm.com or you can call 618-294-8696. And of course, all of those are on our website right now, so you can just click on the links and they'll take you straight there. And we're going to take a look at some more local stories after the break. But first, here's a look at what's coming up on GMA. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the fight against COVID. The CDC giving the green light to booster shots for 16 and 17 year olds. Boosters being approved for younger children next. This is as research is showing that kids under 18 are helping drive up cases right now. Some states running low on hospital beds. We'll have that and so much more coming up right here on GMA.
will we remember a Benton man who dedicated his life to serving others? Gene Alexander, better known as Mr. A, died Wednesday. Alexander was a longtime local educator and a former Benton principal. Now, he was even featured as WSIL's unsung hero in May of 2011. A sculpture will be made to honor Mr. A's legacy. A scholarship is also being created in his name. He was 86 years old. And of course, this man, a past unsung hero, will be featured on the Tamron Hall Show next week. Craig Bradley was our unsung hero just last week, and he's an instructor at Shawnee Community College. Before the pandemic, he joined a committee to create a student food pantry, which is available for students on a weekly basis. Now, Bradley regularly picks up food to help keep it stocked. You can watch Bradley's segment on the Tamron Hall Show on Monday. It airs at 3, just before our newscast here on Channel 3. Of course, I will also be talking to him about his experience, and you can see that Monday morning. So. You were so excited to hear about this. I, I was. Know. He I, texted me, and yeah. I was very excited. That's awesome. <laughs> I think he deserves it. national recognition there. And, of course, uh, tracking the threat for strong storms coming up later on tonight. We've been talking about this for a few days, so don't get caught off guard. Strong, damaging winds possible and a few tornadoes. A few of those tornadoes in this setup could be strong. The timing begins as early as about 7 p.m. and runs as late as about 4 a.m. Saturday morning. Nighttime events are typically more dangerous and a little more concerning. Concerning. So make sure that you are paying attention to this. Once again, wind damage and tornadoes the main threat. Make sure you've got the Storm Track 3 app. We are going to be cooling down into the weekend, Evie, and thankfully by daybreak Saturday, the severe weather threat coming to an end. All right. Thank you, Nick. We'll see you back here at 723 with more news and weather.